spanking, arguably the most controversial action in a parent's disciplinary cabinet. Today we're going to look at the why, the what, and the how of it. Let's get to it. Spanking, a um, disciplinary technique that's fallen into a lot of disfavor, uh, especially among uh, the elites, the uh, intelligentsia, and uh, certain so-called experts in the field of child rearing. Uh, I find it fascinating that those identified as the greatest generation of our time, those that made ultimate sacrifices and uh, fought fascism, were those that were brought up under the rule of corporal punishment, spanking. And I also find it fascinating that we have seen an incredible decline in uh, morality and an incredible incline in uh, violence and uh, lack of respect that we see among so many young people. The proof is in the pudding. Discipline either works or it doesn't. Now, first, we need to have a couple of caveats before we dive into this subject. One is we're talking about a disciplinary method that is used infrequently, that is used with uh, supposedly healthy, both physically and emotionally, children. Um, not indeed, uh, we're talking about special needs that may incur other uh, tactics or approaches or other help. And also, we're not talking about folks who have a history of violence, abuse, uh, trouble controlling their temper. These are folks that need to use other forms of child discipline because they have to be in a position where they maintain control and they trust themselves. So with that, let's dive into it. So what are we describing when we say spanking? We are talking about one, two, or three healthy licks on the backside of a child when they have done one of three things. They have been in your face defiant. They have injured, hurt someone else physically, often another child. Or three, other methods of discipline have been exhausted. We're not talking about kicking, striking other than the buttocks, breaking skin, leaving bruises, anything of that nature. Let's review what I like to refer to as the rules by the half dozen. Rule number one, never strike out in anger. A parent is supposed to model self-control and appropriate behavior. And this works counter to that. This is also the argument that so many who are anti-spanking use. However, I think their argument is moot if a parent is deliberate, under control, and limits how, when, and where they do the spanking. Rule number two. Spanking uh, should not be the primary means of discipline. Uh, once again, if we're dealing with a healthy child, most other instances where discipline needs to be applied can utilize other methods, uh, taking away privileges, limiting uh, 
transportation, limiting money for things, um, restrictions, uh, grounding, and so forth and so on. Uh, unfortunately, there are times when a child can be very physically aggressive, and in those instances, you know, little Johnny punching Mary in the side of the head is not going to receive simply go stand in the corner. It needs to be a consequence that is substantial and hopefully as inconvenient for little Johnny. Rule number three. Excessive need or use of spanking indicates that there are other problems. 95% of the time, other means of discipline should be able to be employed and uh, done in such a way that it has the required effect. Um, when spanking is needed or utilized too often, it may indicate poor parenting, or it may mean there are other issues that need to be addressed with the help of a professional. Rule number four. The least amount of power needed should be used when spanking. As said before, normally we're talking about one, two, or three whacks on the fleshy part of the buttocks. Um, if a parent can't feel in control when spanking, then they need to either wait or they need to set it aside altogether. Rule number five, uh, spanking should be done reluctantly. It should not be one of those things that parents enjoy. If that's the case, then again, we're dealing with another problem and the parent needs to address their issue. Another thing that uh, should be kept in mind is when children reach the age of around 12, give or take a year, uh, they're getting too old, too mature, too big, to be spanked. And in that case, other methods of discipline should be employed. Fortunately, because of friends, transportation, money, and so forth, there are alternatives once they get older, which sometimes involve cell phones, which can be quite, quite effective. And rule number six, been referenced already, but if a parent cannot be in control or they feel like they can't be in control, then don't use this method of discipline. And if there's that history of loss of temper or abuse, then that's just something that needs to be shelved. How to spank. It should be done calmly, quietly, and quickly. There's an importance to attaching a consequence to a bad action where time is a factor. And the closer they are attached, the more connection mentally a child will make that one is associated with the other. And that's what discipline's about turning a child in the right direction by making that connection. Of course, the area that is targeted is uh, the backside, the fleshy part of the buttocks, nowhere else. Where to spank? Um, for the most part, not in public. Our society is such that uh, I've seen too many situations where overzealous Adults have called uh, the police or child safety officers uh, when they've witnessed a child being spanked in public. So, where to spank? Uh, privately, away from others in most instances. What to spank with? Well, so many parents do use their hand, and that's legitimate. However, there are a lot more bones in a, an adult's hand than there is in a child's buttocks. Uh, you're much more likely to do some real damage to yourself more so than the child physically. Use of a flat spoon, wooden spoon, 
or a um, five gallon paint stirrer you can pick up at the hardware store uh, is, is an alternative. Uh, positioning, uh, the old uh, across the knee method uh, is, is effective, uh, especially with uh, younger children. And uh, what we need to be cautious of there is they have a tendency to try to protect themselves by moving their hands to cover the buttocks. And of course, we don't want to hit the hands. Clothing. Another issue that comes up with regard to spanking. Um, a child should be fully clothed when they're spanked. The act of discipline is to turn a child in the right direction, not to cause undue embarrassment or confusion. The uh, other matter I would mention is they should not be spanked right out of the tub or, or the shower or having been swimming. The, the skin is wet and uh, physically we don't want to do damage. Uh, exceptions to the use of spanking were noted at the very beginning, and that is there are some children that have been abused, and uh, therefore any sort of physical act on them is a trigger, and so we can't use it. I see it more often in adopted children, perhaps, than uh, in other situations. The other uh, matter I would mention is that there is a very rare occurrence when a child who seems physically and mentally healthy will overreact, be rebellious, trigger physical altercations uh, when they are spanked. In that case, the recommendation is to seek some professional counsel to make sure there aren't some other things going on. Normally a child that is physically and mentally healthy will respond appropriately when spanking is appropriately administered. I hope you found this information helpful. I realize this is counter-cultural and politically incorrect. However, I do believe the proof is in the pudding. Looking at past generations, comparing them with present generations, and looking at the issues we're dealing with. Thanks for giving this a consideration. And remember, this is just one more tool in a parent's disciplinary toolbox. God bless. Be healthy.